live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Infor. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship product. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're going to get a great customer perspective here, uh, business and IT alignment. Nasser Bayram is here. He's the managing director of the commercial vehicles division of Zahid Tractor, and Barig Siraj is the CIO of that organization. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so Thank much you. for Thank taking you for time and us coming you. on. Thanks so, tell us about Zahid Tractor. Many of our audience may not be familiar with them, but large, sure. successful organization. Give us the two minutes. Yeah, two. I'll be happy to do that. Um, uh, it's just, actually, Zahid Tractor is a part of a big group, Zahid Group. It's a very diversified group uh, with 4,000 employees. Uh, we are in the um, uh, capital equipment industries, we're the Caterpillar dealer, Volvo trucks dealer, Renault trucks dealer. We're also into food and beverage, hospitality, uh, tourism and travel, manufacturing, uh, fabrication, uh, real estate management, and a long list of uh, industries that we are uh, uh, participating in and we are a major player in in the, in the Saudi economy. As for Zahi Tractor, which is a flagship of the group, uh, is an importer and dealer of uh, Caterpillar machinery for many years, for more than 60 years. It's the largest um, CAT machine dealer in the world as of last year, and uh, has contributed significantly to the infrastructure of Saudi Arabia. Uh, we're very proud to be associated with the group and the company. And as a, you're a business manager, former IT background, but you're a P&L, you know, yes, general yes, manager. Yes, indeed. You know, drive <laughs> the growth of the organization, profitability, and, and Barak, you are the CIO, correct? Yes. Talk uh, a little bit about your role and some of the, some of the challenges in, in your business. Uh, 30 years ago, they had decided to have a bespoke system. They developed their own IT system. So parts, service, uh, prime, all of it was developed, either workflow, for that even the HR system was developed internally for quite a long time. Now, the people that helped make this happen, Nasser included, uh, and a lot of them have actually uh, started to retire and were facing an issue with maintaining this uh, legacy application. So, a few years back, we decided to choose an ERP system. We asked CAT which direction should we go, and out of the shortlist that they gave us, we actually went through a uh, whole uh, due, diligence. I, uh, due diligence and came up with, uh, chose Infor as our uh, product to go towards, migrating from our legacy to our, uh, to Infor. And we'll talk more about that, but okay. so if take us back to the decision, you know, to, to build best of breed bespoke, it gave you competitive advantage. At the time. Back then. Yes. But doesn't anymore, what's, what's changed? Talk about that change. Excellent question, actually. What changed, many factors, um, the economy in Saudi Arabia being transformed from an oil-based economy to a private sector and manufacturing economy. With that, with that transformation and the change in the landscape, landscape of the industry and the behavior of our customers, uh, who are more demanding, uh, more uh, internet savvy, uh, um, forces you or drives you to be proactive from a vision and strategy perspective to look at a platform that have to support you on the many facets of the uh, change in the economy and the industry. On one hand, we are a very diverse group. On the other hand, the economy is changing, customers are changing. So what you need to have is a platform that support all that diversification and all that changes. You cannot support that in-house so much. The dynamics are so fast, so quick. To do that internally, you have to build an army of people and recreate one of these available of the shelf packages. Hence the decision, the strategic business decision to transform our um, IT infrastructure to enable our business with a platform that supports that, and M4 was well, the choice to do that, because as we saw this morning as well, M4 is very diverse in offering solutions for many of the industries we are in, have it be um, uh, food and beverage, have it be uh, uh, logistics and warehousing, transportation, uh, service and parts, or M3 uh, equipment uh, solution. It is one of the reasons why we did that decision. It's a business decision to have the right platform to enable the business to be ready for the future with the challenge that we are facing in the, in the market. And of course, back in the day, the requirements were different. You know, you, you wanted it to work. You know, simple wasn't really a factor. Fast, you know, you know, agility wasn't a factor. 
But how has that changed now? Well, you have to realize that Saudi Arabia today, 60% uh, of Saudi Arabia is a young, 16 year old, uh, and actually, uh, a young, uh, 20, 22 now and so 60%? 60 percent? 60 percent, okay. yes. It, and all of those are mobile savvy, internet savvy, so our customers were the father you, uh, started with a fax machine or whatever and so forth, his sons are clicking on their uh, iPhone, wanting an iPad, wanting, so all of this changed. Now, uh, we need to serve our customers. You need to supply them with information. And uh, doing that from a legacy application meant rebuilding a lot of the uh, wheels that are already available in the market. And that's where the decision came from. Is there such a thing as an IT project in your company or is it always a business project? <laughs> from our perspective, this is a business project. Yes. Business drives IT. IT enables the business. IT, IT provides the, um, the tools uh, to grow and make sure that we have a profitable growth and for, for our diversified business. But the solution, especially when we talk about Infor, is a business-driven solution. Right. The whole due diligence exercise was driven by the users. IT did their part uh, of uh, participating in assessing the technical solution of the platform. But the rest is a business-driven solution. So you talked about the decision to go with Infor, and you know, a lot of choices out there. A lot of, a lot of much larger companies, better known brands. Talk a little bit more about the decision to go with, with Infor. We did a, um, a very intense due diligence exercise. We started with seven companies, or seven possible partners, and we shortlisted those down to three. Uh, I'm not sure if we're supposed to name them or not. Name them, sure. Oh, well, we, we shortlisted SAP, uh, Microsoft, and M4. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we uh, conducted a POC, proof of concept, uh, and an exercise where our business people came in with test scenarios and business scenarios and asked the vendors out of time to come prepared to present them, see how they're going to work. And based on that uh, business scenarios they presented to us, those same business users gave a, uh, a rating for each um, uh, solution or, or uh, track or module. And at the end of the day, those, uh, the results of the rating of the users, the business users were presented to the executive steering committee who uh, supported the choice of the users. No one uh, interfered or intervened to influence any direction. It was purely done based on the merit of the evaluation of the business scenarios and the compatibility of this solution with our business scenarios. They must have loved going through that. Go ahead, please. Oh, so basically, uh, uh, then we formed a team which is a few PMOs. We actually uh, absorbed the Six Sigma team within the organization into the project and then took a lot of users, put them in, uh, and uh, the project team became 70% uh, users and 30% IT and project management. And uh, in addition to the subject matter experts and the part-timers that are involved with this uh, project, so, if you look at it, it is a very user-driven, operational-driven uh, team. So you had good visibility as to what to expect, but also probably very high expectations, I would imagine. More important, we had ownership. <laughs> I mean, the reason you, want, you have to have your business community driving this is to own the solution. If it's an IT solution, an IT-driven solution, when you go live and it doesn't work for any one reason, they say, hey, it was IT's, not mine. But here we have the business driving it, the business owning it. But at Hence the, the vested interest in making sure it's a successful project. But actually at the same time, we put a governance system in place. So the users don't rebuild a bespoke solution on top of M3. And that was, uh, so we actually, the governance committee actually forced everybody to adopt and adapt instead of just uh, modify. Re, uh, modify the uh, solution M3 to be similar to the bespoke. Yeah, because that's what users want to do. Yeah. We, well, we want to customize it for our own narrow purposes. So you hear a lot at Infor about no need for custom mods and, and, and striving to get things out of the box. Was that your experience? We did that for our Altaka Global out of Dubai. We took a vanilla solution out of the box and we deployed it in Dubai. It went live in less than nine months, worked very well, still working very well. This but was 13.1. Uh, on 13.1 uh -huh. uh, version. 
but when you go to a big um, a group, diversified group, and big organization like Zahi Tractor in Saudi Arabia, you do have certain local requirements. Well, you have to have certain customization. Not only that, we're working very well with them for to uh, take some of our requirements and recommend them and suggest them to be part of the core of the M4 solution. And we're very pleased to say that in the equipment um, module or solution, uh, more than 120 of our business processes were adopted by M4 to be part of the 13.4 solution. Uh, on the other hand, we've taken their Renault solution uh, out of 13.4 with a fit of uh, close to 77% out of the box with very minor changes and will hopefully go live with that solution in Q1 2017. And that's huge because now Infor is maintaining it, not you guys or your yes, consultants. Yes, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> George. So I'm wondering, you know, now that um, there's, there's governance from IT and ownership from the business units, but as more and more of the functionality spreads, it becomes more and more industry specific and less horizontal, meaning almost like less uh, focused on financials or HR and more you know, focused on the heavy equipment, manufacturing, distribution. Um, how does IT put guardrails on what becomes uh, more and more industry specific functionality? First, the governance is not IT. It's the governance is a team of decision maker, chaired by myself, uh, membership of our CIO and ARP director, our uh, financial controller, and one external consultant who is not an M4 employee or a Zahid employee. That give us an out of the box view, an independent view of an experienced ERP professional to guide us through some of the decision we make. So in the governance, we do not uh, make technical decisions, we make business decisions. So these uh, process owners come and present to us any of the requirement for change and we look at the merit of the return of that change, whether it's worth investing or not. If there's a workaround, and by the way, M4 will be present in every presentation, so M4 give us their input and feedback on why uh, we should not be making that modification. Um, uh, based on this presentation, we make the right business decision. That's one. Two, from an IT perspective, IT's role has been so far purely technical. Um, some of the key IT leaders the business guys who support the business are uh, uh, members of the teams for that respective steam, uh, stream. For example, the top IT guy in parts is a member of the part team. So he's not an IT guy, he is a team player in that solution. The same applies to service, the same applies to finance. That changes the landscape or the approach and the methodology of how you manage such a project away from being IT driven, this is what I think your user should do, to know this is how we together we're going to define the right business process for the future that's efficient, cost effective, and will enable, enable the business. And the way we put those teams together, we put them on a table, and basically you bring your laptops, this is the parts table. And the for consultant, the config consultant, the IT guy and the users are all sitting, working together, putting charts, whiteboards, and working together. And designing together. Defining the solution, everything. And the outcome, talk about the outcome of, of that effort. Well, we have completed uh, the design phase. Now we enter the configuration phase. And this is where uh, you find out whether the solution you've designed will be properly configured or properly, sorry, will fit the configuration of the um, solution. And um, we're also preparing the same time parallel for our testing. And in parallel, we're preparing for the go live of our Renault uh, company, EJAR, which hopefully will, be, will go live in uh, Q1 2017. So now we are at stage, we are configuring the, the solution that was designed and ready for testing. And we don't want to just test the, what we, uh, the, uh, the design, but we want to test the solution. Right. To do that, we said, okay, everybody participate in the project, being the project full-time employees, or the part-time, or the subject matter experts, would come up with the test script. But then we asked operation, reach out to your frontliners and get us some test scenarios that 
maybe we never thought of. So at the, by br bringing that in, we're testing the whole solution, not just the, whatever those guys design. So. so testing the design would be testing the sort of logical flow. Yes. Does it tick all the boxes? Yes. Is it complete? Yeah. Testing the solution is does it work? For the operation. <laughs> yeah, for the, for yeah. the business. For That's the, why for the solution, um, as we do the configuration, we embark on a quality check, what we call end-to-end -end integration. So for example, when you take your car to be serviced, uh, the mechanic needs to be scheduled, depending on the repair, making sure parts are available, and make sure also if you um, pay in cash or on credit that you have the means to pay for it. All of that uh, trigger different points uh, in different modules in the system. So initially when the design was done was each in their own vertical, the service, the parts, and the finance. Now we're doing end-to-end -end integration to secure that this solution work across the board, across the whole process, end-to-end. -end. I want to make a comment, you, uh, you asked earlier about um, uh, how the user feel or the IT guys feel from a technical perspective versus it's an industry specific solution. To avoid that from the beginning, we set certain clear objectives. We are not defi defining uh, a bespoke service or equipment or truck solution. We are embarking on an industry best practice out of the box from M4 on one hand to be customer centric solution. On the other day, you're implementing, you're making such an investment for the return, and the return does not come from me or you, it comes from the end customer uh, who pays the bill. So we have to make sure that we do provide the right service for the customer. Uh, when they come in to a pass counter, that part is available, and if it's not here, it's somewhere else that could be shipped within 24 hours to deliver to the customer. That, the objective we have in mind all along, to avoid the pitfall of having a technical showcase that does not run the business, or a very industry-centric that is too complex and is not workable. So, it sounds like, <laughs> that was my follow-up question, which is, how do you do the cost-benefit analysis of the customization? You just answered it, which was, start with the customer you know, value and exactly. work back. The voice of the business and voice of the customer. Mm -hmm. If you do the solution with only one voice, what without the other, you're going to fail. And Very we also networked with other CAT dealers that are users of Infor or planning on Infor. And we said, okay, this is what we're planning to do. So give us your feedback. And uh, uh, with, uh, with that, with Infor on the table, hearing the requirements from everybody, and that's where the functionality started to be seen from 13.1, 2, 3, 4, more and more to serve the whole CAT community. Yeah, Barry, you mentioned that you're going to go see one shortly yep. um, as part of that, that network. So your relationship with Infor is growing, it seems, seems pretty positive. Yes. Uh, Infor just announced the investment in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. What is the climate like in Saudi Arabia from the standpoint of cloud adoption? I mean, you know, we have a good sense of what it's like in the United States and, and, and you know, Central Europe, but what is it like in Saudi Arabia in terms of affinity with cloud, <laughs> concerns about security, what, what are people saying? Well, um, technology does not know borders anymore. So it doesn't matter whether in Saudi Arabia or South America Same. or yeah. in uh, Honolulu. Uh, yeah. Technology is technology, it's accessible to everybody. The internet changed the, um, uh, the landscape and actually today they use the terminology, they call it the digital disruption. Yes, the digital world has disrupted all of mm -hmm. this. Uh, cloud is very well accepted. Actually, we are in the process of implementing in parallel a treasury management system, which will be integrated with M4, uh, and it will be cloud-based. So that, the, the acceptance of hosted application or leased application is very well accepted, and Saudi Arabia, like mo uh, mo most of the um, uh, advanced um, uh, countries in adopting technology, is progressing very well with the cloud and accepting cloud technology. Uh, I, I, I mean, I think that is so right on. You wanted to add something? Yeah, and one thing is that you have to look at, as I said, Saudi is becoming, as a young, uh, young uh, population and so forth, is very tech savvy. Now, I'll give you an example. In the past, when an IPO used to happen, you need to go to the bank, fill out a piece of paper in order to participate in that IPO. And once the electronic means to participate became available, 70% of participation by the pub, Saudi public is electronic, either through the ATM or through mobile or through the, the internet. 
Yeah, so, now, so the point you're making as well about you know, technology is everywhere, it's well, well understood. We talk a lot on theCUBE about how, and, and your case study underscores this, in, in, back in the day you, had, you built these bespoke systems for good reason, and part of that was you had very known processes, but the technology was unknown, right, mm -hmm. and it was hard. Not that technology is easier today, but technology is known. The process is becoming unknown because of the, the web and mobile and, and big data and digital. So you need a platform that can adjust and, and be flexible. Does that resonate with you? Does that make sense? Of course, not only we need to be very clear, today's technology, availability of technology and the ease of access of technology creates a new problem where if you take best of breed, and they are available, they are very affordable nowadays, and you implement them, you run a more, uh, into a more critical problem for a business, and that is data integration and data availability. For an executive to make a decision, you have to have reliable data. Now, how do you secure reliable data if the entry points of that data from multiple solutions that don't speak the same language with a middle uh, tier layer to integrate them? you really do not know what you are getting yourself into. Having an Infor-like ERP integrated solution give you the peace of mind that that data is integrated, has one source, and not only that, the validity of the data is secured and checked across the board for an executive to make a decision by accessing that data. That's of the ultimate objective in serving your customers and growing the business, having the right reliable data that you can trust to make a decision. I'll give you a story. Uh, we want to do on the bespoke system a business intelligence that pulled data from the different parts in order for, us, uh, for the executive to be able to see that. And the data consistency was huge. And it mm. took us a long time to actually reach to a very uh, uh, sensible sense of what's happening in the, whereas now, as Nasser said, it's coming from one application, one source. All right, we have to leave it there, but Barak, uh, I'll, give, uh, I'll give you each the last word, but just takeaways from Inforum 2016, things that you w learned, want to learn, things that you want to take back to your colleagues, and then Nasser, I'll get your thoughts. Uh, what I've seen is cloud solution is something that uh, we're, look, uh, we're seriously looking at uh, for our future. We're going live on an on-prem solution, but the cloud is something that we want to capitalize on. We see the uh, things like GT Nexus, uh, which CAT use, uses for their prime product. So how can we uh, adopt that? A lot of that to be inside one solution. Now, so your, your final thoughts, please. When you select a solution like this, you don't look only for technology, you look for the partner. And it is really a partnership. Uh, today, it reassured me that we made the right decision, that we have the right partner who will help us um, enable our business and grow the business. We saw their vision and strategy and we like it. We like where they're going with their product. We, we believe uh, we'll be together for a long time. Uh, also, we, we met all of their management uh, who have been very close to our project. We had Mr. Charles Phillips visit us, uh, Stefan Schall supporting us. Uh, we're very happy with that commitment, and I believe both of the organizations um, are set for a successful journey, and we're very happy with our choice. Well, it's a great story, very pragmatic and intelligent approach, so thank you, gentlemen, thank for you. coming thank in you the queue. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back at the Big Apple right after this short break.